Media, I'm Robbie Suave. And I'm Amber Duke. South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem is digging herself quite the hole, or gravel pit, with the release of her new book. After facing backlash for relishing and killing her disobedient puppy, Noem was forced to retract parts of the book where she said she spoke with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. Let's watch. First, we want to talk about a lot of sure. the topics that you address in the book, but yeah. the book is called No Going Back, but mm -hmm. it sounds like the publisher, Center Street, is going back on a couple of the details in the book. Oh, I don't believe so. Specifically, when you write in the book, I remember when I met with North, North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un. I'm sure he underestimated me. That, as I understand, is now being removed from the book at your request. Yes, when correct? I became aware of that, we changed the content and uh, the future editions will be adjusted. And, uh, you know, I appreciate that. I've met with many, many world leaders. I've traveled around the world. Uh, I should not have put that anecdote in the book. And uh, at my request, they have that removed specific it. That meeting didn't happen? How? Uh, I'm saying that I'm not talking about that meeting. I'm not talking about my meetings with world leaders. But you uh, there's do some talk that about are in meetings the book. with world leaders. There's some that are in the book, and then there's some that's not in the book. Over on MSNBC, analysts slammed Gnome as sadistic and touted the whole incident as proof that all Trump supporters are horrible people. Let's watch. I mean, Chris, these are horrible people. They, they're, they're just awful. Their nihilism and their bloodlust is pathological at this point because really the cruelty is the point in MAGA, right? And this is a perfect example of that. I mean, Christy Noem can make any excuse she wants. She can try and walk it back all she wants or blame it on the fake news media all she wants or blame it on her ghostwriter or the editors or the publishers. But no, she made the choice to put this in her book, a book that she has already audio voice. There's an audio version of it. So she was well aware of what was all in it. And she just made the decision to brag about being a puppy executioner. It's sadistic. It's pretty, it is pretty bad. Um, <laughs> this is a totally self-inflicted gunshot wound on Christy Nome's part to have um, put the puppy thing in the book, to put the the meeting that didn't happen with Kim Jong-un into the book. Now, of course, we're showing people a little bit how the sausage is made for famous celebrities and politicians who write books. None of them write their own books. A ghostwriter writes it for the person. If you're at all competent, you will at least skim the book that is published under your name that you supposedly wrote to make sure it is accurate. And she apparently didn't even bother to do that because this is a pretty glaring anecdote to have been wrong, the, the Kim Jong-un one. The puppy one, she clearly thought was gonna make her look good. I don't. I don't know why. Yeah. I, you know. I said. Uh, I, I think I would feel a little bit differently about the puppy thing if it like, if it was Oppo research that someone dug up on her and they were trying to take her out of the VV runnings. But she brought it up. She introduced this as a conversation point. Why? What was she thinking? And that's what what was confusing to me because I thought maybe she put it in the book to get ahead of Oppo research, mm. but. I mean, even so, the way she describes it, spinning it as like, oh, well, sometimes you got to make the tough decisions. I mean, it's one thing to put down an older animal that's at the end of its life or one that has bitten a bunch of people like uh, Joe Biden's rab dog. <laughs> a rabid <laughs> animal. <laughs> but No, she seems to enjoy an, killing it, animals. It was an 18-month-old puppy. And there was a goat? And two horses at the same time, which was incredibly strange. Uh, yeah, I mean, I saw there were a lot of memes about her showing up to the Kentucky Derby with the, <laughs> the gun just ready to put down horses. Um, but I mean, I think the larger point is the way that she has basically tried to gaslight everyone who's brought this up to her. She's been making the rounds both on unfriendly and friendlier media. She's gone on quite a few conservative networks, including Fox and Newsmax, and even their hosts are like, hey lady, this is actually not a good look for you. And she's been doubling down by saying, well, you're just, you're not a rancher, so you don't understand. And then on the Kim Jong-un story, she did this incredible interview with Jesse Waters on Fox, where she, again, tried to say that it's not that the anecdote was false, it's that I don't talk about my conversations with world leaders, which again, she didn't remove conversations with other world leaders from the book. And then Jesse Waters goes, okay, but you're the one who put it in there, so you started the conversation. And her response was, I don't have conversations about my conversations with world leaders. Oh my God. Could it get any worse? I don't know why she wouldn't just stop doing interviews about this book at this point. Like, whatever, sales are going to 
not be good. Or maybe they'll be better because of the controversy. It looks like, I looked at the numbers, it looks like it hasn't really helped at all. And I mean, who wants a... Who wants this book anyway? I don't quite understand. Look, I now I appreciated Christy Nome's um, COVID approach uh, pretty well. I think there were some positive things to say for her as a possible um, VP candidate. Um, she's you know on, on the COVID stuff in particular. Um, she's clearly taken herself out of the running uh, on this basis on the, the basis of the of the puppy side, as far as I can tell. A hundred percent. And you asked why doesn't she just stop doing interviews? And I think if we go back a couple of years and look at her response to the criticism of her vetoing a bill that would have kept men out of women's sports, mm -hmm. she did the exact same thing. It was the exact same PR strategy. She did a bunch of interviews. She went on Tucker when he still had his Fox show and doubled down on the veto. She said that her critics didn't understand what she was doing or what her objections were. She did this circular logic constantly. Mm -hmm. One of her big complaints was that people kept pointing out that she had apparently vetoed the bill for economic reasons as opposed to actual objections to the content. Yeah, I have the vaguest recollection of this, but I remember agreeing with her. Uh, so you probably don't agree. So, so No, so, I so don't. Explain but, it to me. Well, well, what she said was that she was worried that the NCAA was going to pull tournaments out of mm -hmm. South Dakota, and that was going to be really harmful to the economics of the state. And then also that she was worried about the NCAA potentially suing the state, and then she would have to use taxpayer money to defend it. And, like, my argument would be that she should just d let them do it. I mean, mm -hmm. call their bluff make them do it. I think women's sports are important enough to take that risk. But I mean, the point is, she goes on all of these interviews saying all of this. And then we're like, okay, so you vetoed it for economic reasons. And she goes, no, 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 you don't understand what I'm saying. And so it was just another example of her like constantly trying to twist the facts and the narrative, contrary to what people can see with their own eyes. It's like the same exact thing happening now with all of these book controversies. So I just don't know that she knows any other way to take criticism than to do exactly what she's doing right yeah. now. And she's clearly going to, like, all they're going to ask about now is these same things. I don't know what she's expecting when she goes into interviews. You're right, she just did another one on, uh, on Fox. I saw one on Newsmax this morning. Um, she's not getting a friendly treatment from conservatives at all, which speaks to that, that clip we played on uh, Chris Hayes where the guest was saying that, you know, this is an indictment of... I don't know, every Republican or something is a participant in the puppy side. Oh, She's right. getting attacked by her own political tri I, I didn't see, I don't think I saw a single concern. I don't think I saw a single person come to her defense on any of this. And that includes, you know, people who know ranching very well and, and know that, y yes, the, the reality in, in the, if you work with animals, sometimes it is necessary to put down an animal for various reasons. My sister-in-law is a horse doctor. She saves a lot of horses. She also has to kill a lot of horses because sometimes they can't be saved or it's too expensive and that's what the owner wants. Um, but that is fundamentally different from what was described in that book. I know, I'm a cat owner. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm married, so it's not like a crazy cat lady thing. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, we've had to put down several of our cats over the years because they get some disease where you have to make this really tough decision if, you're gonna put them through kidney dialysis every yeah. day. And it's like, it's a cat and it's old and it's sad and it's in pain and like, you gotta let it go. But I think reasonable people saw that this was not one of those situations where the potential cost of the animal continuing to live outweighed, right, the, yeah. the benefits. And uh, yeah, I, I didn't see anyone defending her. Um, Tara Setmeyer, though, is sort of like famous for making everything about Trump. She genuinely suffers from Trump derangement syndrome. So I not mean, we surprised. should expect nothing less from mm -hmm. her. Indeed. Thanks for watching Free Media. Like, share, and subscribe.